Shaping the globe. The Democratic Republic of Congo's former president, Joseph Kabila, is taking legal action against a Namibian newspaper after it alleged that he was connected to a money laundering syndicate. Now, the Namibian claims that Kabila has strong ties to a company which laundered more than half a billion rand from the DRC's treasury to a Namibian fishing firm. Kabila has denied any association with the allegations. The Namibian published a story on the 17th of December this year, linking former President Joseph Kabila, his relatives and close associates to a tax-exempt company, EGAL. It alleges that EGAL paid monies to a fishing companies under the guise of importing cheap, healthy food for the DRC. The paper's investigation claims very little product was actually delivered to the country from Fintuk. Kabila has now instructed lawyers in Johannesburg and the Namibian capital uh, to file defamation lawsuits against the journalist and the publication. He claims the article was malicious and injured his dignity. Uh, local advocate Dalim Porfu has been appointed to lead the case. Well, to look deeper into this, uh, we're also joined uh, by Patrick Kauta, who's a senior litigation director at uh, Dr. Wida Kauta uh, Hoveka Inc., a law firm in Namibia, instructed by the DRC ex-president to handle the lawsuit against the Namibian newspaper. Thanks very much indeed for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, it's a pleasure. All right. So um, when you saw these articles, the ex-president hadn't uh, contacted you. What were your initial impressions about what you read and saw? Well, I usually do not uh, take uh, uh, newspaper clippings for the truth thereof. So my initial impression was uh, one... Uh, that uh, of, of, of a sensational story. Right. Uh, but I just wondered the aim thereof initially when I, when I read it. All right. So then the former president uh, contacted you. Um, what did he say? Uh, the initial conduct was to get um, uh, Advocate Mpofu involved uh, and once we have done that was to consult uh, and during the consultation is when we realized that there was no truth to the fact that uh, the former president was connected to Samaki fishing mm -hmm. uh, that allegedly received any, uh, money from uh, Eagle uh, only then did we then realize the full extent of the untruthfulness of the article. Do you think that the paper was misled or, you know, I mean, they, they claim to have evidence, they claim to have done an investigation, um, and I suppose the only thing that we could conclude is either it was done purposefully or that they were misled. Well, I think once we have gone to court, we'll know what the full extent uh, is, why it has been published. But uh, uh, the, the newspaper claimed to rely on a, a document uh, named or investigation named uh, the holdup. But uh, we have uh, perused those documents and we also see no mention of some maki fishing in those documents uh, that could possibly be linked to the former president. So we don't understand why the newspaper has gone to those extents. Did the paper ever try to reach out to the former president before print? No, not at all. So they just went ahead without getting his side of the story? Absolutely. They only conducted... Uh, even from the article itself, they only conducted uh, a Namibian company that uh, 
but uh, not the president. The president was not conducted at all. Is the former president in any way associated, connected to, either directly or indirectly, with this company, Eagle? Uh, no, not from the instructions that we have. Uh, the instructions that we have and from the press release that was issued uh, yesterday or later yesterday is the fact that even uh, the internal investigation in the DRC itself cleared the president with respect to Eagle or any wrongdoing by Eagle connected to the president. So my understanding as well is that this story has run quite far and wide and it was carried by uh, uh, and other organizations such as uh, 18 media organizations, I believe, including the BBC and Bloomberg. Will you be suing these companies as well? Uh, we are part of... Uh uh, a group of uh, lawyers, uh, both in Congo, uh, Johannesburg, as you said, Paris in Washington, and uh, all those media houses that has ran this story uh, will also be sued by the various lawyers in the various uh, jurisdictions. All right. So there were no funds diverted from uh, the... Democratic Republic of Congo's treasury that the ex-president knew about? Well, I, that, that I cannot say. I have no instructions with respect to that. I can only speak with respect to the article that appeared in the Namibian and uh, its uh, linkages to the president. That there is none. I, I cannot speak to other issues that are uh, I, I don't know. I, uh, I hold no instructions and no have I asked questions relating to that. It, it, it's, re it's irrelevant to the uh, article mm. that we're dealing with. Has the Namibian been sued before for, for defamation and inaccuracies? Yes, they have. Uh, they have. I mean, it's a, the Namibian is a newspaper in print for more than 30 years, I think. And uh, it has happened before, mm. successfully and unsuccessfully, I must add. So have you approached the paper? Have they said that they're going to stick by their story or are they planning to retract? What is the situation? Or you have not approached them yet? We have not approached the Namibian yet. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, realized that by the time we got instruction, uh, the Namibian is, uh, is on holiday until uh, the 4th of January. They are only coming back to print in, uh, back on the 4th of January, and by then we will take it up with them. All right. Might you be able to avert a, a legal situation if they apologize and retract the story? Well, that uh, depends uh, from the client. Uh, at this stage, we do not have, uh, we hold no instructions to request the Namibian to retract, but uh, to issue summons. Mm. How does Namibian law work around defamation? Um, what kind of sanction and damages could the ex-president receive if, if he's successful? Well, the Namibian law on defamation, uh, it's very, uh, it's not as developed as the U.S. Mm. Uh, and the likes. Um, uh, you, you do not get uh, punitive damages. And uh, there hasn't been a case in this country where uh, damages has been awarded for more than 100,000, as it were. Uh, so private law is not really a, a realm that has been developed to the extent that it is, um, it, it, it is deterrent as a form of punishment, especially for newspapers and the media houses. And perhaps maybe this will be the first case where uh, we will traverse issues uh, relating to damages 
uh, to those extents. But uh, so far, it's just um, very conservative. And what needs to be proved uh, for a defamation case in your country? Uh, wrongfulness uh, it's, it's, it's one of the elements that was wrongful. It was negligently done uh, with intention to injure uh, the president's uh, uh, reputation. Mm. So it has to be deliberate. If, if it was a mistake, does that change it at all? No, uh, it doesn't have to be deliberate. Mm. Uh, it, it, even, uh, even if it's uh, negligence suffices. Uh, you can't print by mistake anyway. I mean, right. uh, it goes through various... The, the way printing works, uh, it's, the ultimate decision is not taken by the journalist. It's taken by the editor. Uh, so I, th yeah. I don't think it's a mistake. Mistake, uh, mistake is a defense in our law, and nor is it in common Commonwealth uh, jurisdiction. All right, and uh, you've made contact with Advocate Mpofu. Yes, we consulted the uh, former president, uh, and I've also consulted uh, Advocate Mpofu. Uh, I uh, spoke even to him today uh, before this. Uh, so uh, I'm in contact with him uh, almost on a, on a weekly, uh, on, a, on a daily basis since mm. last week, Thursday, yes. All right. And, and when, when are you going to go to court then? Uh, we will uh, issue the court documents um, mid uh, January, uh, but uh, if you are asking for the actual trial, it yeah. will possibly be later next year. But the initial, the court initiating papers will be done uh, in January, mid January, yes. All right. So we should, we may see a number of uh, suits in a number of territories by the sounds of it. Yes, certainly. You will have noticed uh, that uh, there has been uh, various press releases uh, in uh, Paris uh, that I know of, Kinshasa, and the one that we were involved with. So there's currently three, but I believe more will still come. All right. And you've not had a chance to see any of the evidence that uh, they claim to have. All you have at this stage is just the newspaper articles. Uh, no, we had the benefit of reading the uh, so-called uh, so uh, various uh, documents uh, titled the Congo Holdup. Uh, and in none of those documents uh, do we find a mention of uh, Samaki fishing that the Namibian reports uh, on. All right. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Let's hope uh, we can catch up with you in the early new year, perhaps just to see how things are going. But thanks so much indeed uh, for our first contact this evening. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Good night. All right, so that's a Namibian lawyer, um, Patrick Kauta. He's also a businessman there, uh, representing the um, former DRC president, Joseph Kabila, who says that uh, he is upset that this newspaper and 18 other media houses, apparently, have run stories about the DRC, former DRC president with allegations of corruption, I guess, uh, in a nutshell. But he's fighting back, and uh, some of those uh, publications include the BBC and Bloomberg. You're watching The Globe on the SABC News Channel. Stay with us, and uh, we'll be back after the break. And we will be going to Kenya, because new restrictions there. If you don't have a, a, a COVID-19 vaccination, there are 